The quadratus lumborum block or QL block is a blockade of the intercostal nerves of the abdominal wall that provides pain control for a variety of abdominal and other procedures. In this video, we'll discuss the anatomy, sonoanatomy, and technique for the anterior approach to the QL block and offer some tips for success. The quadratus lumborum muscle stretches from the iliac crest to the 12th rib with medial attachments to the lumbar transverse processes. It lies anterior to the erector spinae muscle and posterior to the psoas major muscle. The ventral rami of the lower thoracic nerves run along its anterior surface and local anesthetic placed here in the potential space between psoas and QL will anesthetize those nerves supplying the abdominal wall. In this cross section of the abdominal wall, we see the transversus abdominis muscle, the internal and external oblique muscles, and the latissimus dorsi muscle superficially. Adjacent to the vertebra, we find the erector spinae muscle posteriorly, the psoas major muscle tucked in beside the vertebral body, and the QL muscle extending laterally from the tip of the transverse process. The ventral rami of the lower thoracic nerves travel between the psoas and QL, then across the anterior surface of QL before jumping into the tap plane. This gives us several opportunities to block these nerves, and the three common approaches are named due to their relation to the QL muscle. The lateral approach is very similar to a tap block where local anesthetic is placed at the lateral aspect of QL. The posterior approach targets the fascial plane posterior to QL with the hope that the local spreads medially and or anteriorly. The anterior approach targets the intermuscular fascial plane between QL and psoas major. While there are pros and cons to each approach, the one that we favor for abdominal surgery is the anterior approach. In our setting, this achieves the most extensive cephalad spread of local anesthetic and the best overall effect of the three approaches. Other names for this approach are the QL3 and the transmuscular QL block. One of the reasons for the success of the anterior QL is the fact that local anesthetic will travel in a cephalad direction and enter the paravertebral space of the lower thorax via the lumbocostal arch. Here we've made the psoas muscle slightly transparent, and we can see the gap here outlined in yellow. This facilitates blockade of the upper reaches of the abdomen and contributes to visceral analgesia following low thoracic sympathetic block. The QL is a volume block, and with 30 mils of dilute local anesthetic on each side, you should see a sensory block of most of the anterior and lateral abdominal wall, as well as some visceral coverage. We use this block for abdominal pelvic cases, where we require a broad coverage of the abdomen. Examples include colorectal surgery, cesarean delivery, prostatectomy, nephrectomy, and GYM procedures. It's nice for robotic surgery when you have multiple port sites scattered over various quadrants. Because the QL usually gets the T12 and L1 branches, people have also used QL blocks for hip surgery. This block can easily be done in the sitting and prone positions, although we most commonly perform the block in the lateral position for ergonomics and patient comfort. A curvilinear transducer is placed on the posterior lateral abdomen at the level of the iliac crests. The probe is rotated so the beam is directed back towards the patient's spine. The needle is advanced from the posterior or medial side of the probe, often near the spinal midline. Both sides can be blocked with one position this way, with no need to flip the patient over. Here's a typical QL sonogram with the ultrasound beam directed obliquely at the paraspinal structures. We see the QL muscle extending laterally off the transverse process with the psoas deep to it. The QL usually looks like a flag flying from the flagpole of the TP. Further anterior and deeper, you'll appreciate motion associated with the retroperitoneum. Sometimes the kidney can be observed bobbing in and out of the picture. Suffice it to say, that's a no-fly zone. The target fascia plane is usually quite bright because of its perpendicular orientation to the beam. The needle will be advanced from the medial or posterior aspect. The nomenclature of this block has evolved and has become quite contentious at times. Maybe I'm just hungry, but I think this block should be named for the steak that, frankly, looks exactly like the picture we're after. Let's get porterhouse block trending, shall we? Because we deal with a variety of body shapes and sizes, it's convenient to use bones as a starting point for scanning, rather than soft tissue planes. Here we are in the posterior midline, and we can see the shadow of the spinous process. As we move off laterally, we see first the articular processes, then the transverse process sticking out laterally. The probe is rotated so the beam is directed back towards the paraspinal area, giving us a nice view of the TP flagpole, the QL flag, and the psoas muscle deep to that. Okay, so let's see this block. We see the needle passing through the erector spinae muscle, then QL. After a pop through the deep surface of the QL, a test injection with saline shows that we're in the right plane and the psoas muscle starts to be pushed down and peeled off the underside of QL. You can see the local anesthetic swirling in the potential space we're creating between the QL and psoas. 
There is some lateral spread, but the elastic recoil of the poorly compliant muscles in this part of the trunk will help to squeeze the local cephalad. You can see the retroperitoneal contents moving with respiration, just lateral to the needle position. It's important to ensure that the needle tip is truly between the QL and psoas muscles for the block to be effective, and not between QL and the retroperitoneal fat. Here we see the local anesthetic has pushed the two muscles apart nicely. Here are some QL tips for success. First, we do like to rely on imaging of the transverse process to anchor our image and easily identify the QL muscle. However, you don't want that bony structure to be in your needle path. A slight shift cephalad will take the TP out of the picture, leaving you with a clear shot to the target. Second, there have been cases of quadriceps weakness following QL block, probably due to local anesthetic within the psoas muscle causing a lumbar plexus block. I like to use nerve stimulation to help keep my tip out of QL. I'll turn the current intensity up to 1 or 1 1.5 milliamps, then watch on the screen as my needle passes through the erector spinae, then the QL muscle, watching for the muscle to twitch through direct muscular stimulation. When the needle passes through QL, it'll stop twitching. If the psoas muscle starts twitching on the screen, your tip is too far. Pull back slowly until you're not directly stimulating either muscle. That way you're likely to be in the correct plane. Lastly, you can identify the QL muscle scanning from the anterior aspect. Here we see the tap muscles coming to an end and the QL muscle lying deep to the internal oblique muscle. This strategy is better suited to finding the QL muscle for the lateral and posterior approaches as the plane between the QL and psoas doesn't light up quite as nicely. Especially in challenging patients, relying on bony sonographic landmarks is a reliable path to success.